all right hey guys what's up it's wolf you're one and only how are my adventures doing welcome back to some more devlog this is devlog 14 and we finally get to start on the funnest part for me but also the longest is the battle ui so we actually get the begin coding that and making it remember everything is placeholder it will all be changed over time when i get the chance as of right now we're focusing on just getting the whole game together before we start like you know hiring fiverr artists to like start replacing some stuff yeah i gotta get everything that i need to replace and everything i want to replace so at the moment i picked a random background off of google that we're using as a placeholder and I found a font that is copyright free that we'll be using for a while until I find like a new one. This video is technically full on two hours of doing this. <laughs> this is originally a two hour video. It is now a 24 minute video. Thanks to the power of times five speed. <laughs> so you'll be seeing everything at times five. Now casually be talking over it. So now I need a dialogue bar. This was just a placeholder as well. Just something I found. If anything, I'll probably make my own. Or if I can find somebody to make a cooler one that isn't transparent, I'll probably find I went for there or I could keep transparent and do something pretty cool with it. not sure yet because I could keep it transparent I really could but the next monster girl is currently progressing really really great she should she should have all of her evolved forms by mid-December. Mid or late December, whichever one is gonna, gonna be. I'm looking forward to it. So now I gotta figure out, I well, I found a different video that showed me how to put text in the game. We'll put the custom fonts in the game because the custom font wasn't like, you know, working. And here actually, um, for some reason, this is the only text option that pops up. But later on, I figured out that there's a legacy version that I can use. So I start replacing everything over time later down here. Uh, this for some reason does not work with any of the codes that are being used here. So the legacy version definitely helped and fix that. So this is all just a separate scene for when I do encounter things so, you know, you guys remember the counter system that we had set up. So when I encounter things, this will show up typical Pokemon stuff like that. Now we're making a the fight dialogue text. It's gonna look a lot better once I change out the little T text crap with the actual legacy text. Not only that, like I said, placeholder. It's not gonna look the nicest or neatest. I'm just finding Google stuff at the point at this point. So now I'm trying to figure out how to full screen it so I can see everything. <laughs> but everything is going, looks really nice so far. There is a mistake that I make here. And that is trying to flip around characters. 
I, I implemented these characters. Well, these uh, sprites. Not thinking of which way they were going to face. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, Tigura should be facing the right side. So I have to re-implement all this and have them flip and save again. Which isn't going to be too hard, to be honest. Um, Taima might have to be redesigned to where she's actually facing up here. Because Taigora is like facing it's perfect. Taima's, you'll, you'll see kind of why it might need to be reworked or redesigned. But... So I try flipping them with the rotation. I also do apologize if you guys hear my little brother. He just likes to scream for no reason. He's been pitching more fits as of late. Yeah, I was thinking this would be great, but I gotta also remember that everything's gonna be flipped. As I do this, because this is a is basically a placeholder. So, yeah. So this is the image I found in Google. To get rid of any other, you know, noticeable black lines, I just dropped the shadow background behind it. And here is something that I had did was I also flipped this which I didn't understand the full consequences of flipping this because this is going to be our base <laughs> this is going to be our base HUD that if you flip it around it also changes all of the anchors and all of the, the rotation and scaling with the other things that are under it. So let's say I'm going to put level under here. If I no, let's no, it was the HP one. You'll understand when you see it. I made a big, big old mistake here. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. I flipped it. I was trying to remember at the end of the video if I flipped it back or didn't change it or anything like that. I guess I get to see it in this video and see if I need to delete everything and start again. <laughs> but I managed to uh, fix every single thing that I figured out was wrong towards the end. But yeah, it's going to be the longest video, to be honest, that I make. The <laughs> Well, that I'm making. To this devlog. So I'm just changing the size of the name, just trying to fit it. Well, no, I'm trying trying to anchor it to player HUD, and it's not anchoring. That is because it is anchored, but since I changed the player HUD, it's it's originally supposed to anchor to the right side because if it's flipped. This is no longer the left side of this image. This is now the right side of this image. The right side of this image is on this side and the left side of this image is on this side since I flipped it. So I'm anchoring it to something not right, basically. I figured this out later. <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't make a just a normal box HUD like you know, like the original Pokemon. Now I'm just adding borders to it. Just because I thought that would actually fix it. Not sure when the whole text message can come in. Yeah, see, I figured out there that I changed it to the right side. 
because it's flint. There's also a big oopsie I do with the level as well. Because I was trying to figure out like why the hell was it saying like 17 when I was had my character level 7. But for some reason, my stupid self added a 1. When it was supposed to be an empty box. But now we're doing HP. We have a white box. Now here comes the empty mitt empty box of it I actually like this way of doing it to be honest now here's the part to where Flipping it also costs a little bit of chaos too. Is that he puts a zero here? But I, like I said, I cannot do that. I have to change this to a one for it to be this side. Well, for it to be this side and for the HP to go down this way. If I put in a zero, it only goes this way. Which I think I show that too. I think. Now here's a little circle that I started moving just to fix it. Cause I realized this circle is, is the culprit. So I moved it down here. So that's done now. So originally he was saying put the HP down here, you know, for the original Pokemon. But then I was like, eh, I might as well put it here in the middle, if anything. And now we get into the HP barcoding to where it will actually go down when taking damage. Only funny thing is I'm listening to lo-fi music right now <laughs> and it is great to listen to lo-fi music you guys won't hear it though in the final final project of me rendering this you'll hear the good old normal theme song overworld theme song that you'll probably get tired of by the time the game released <laughs> I figured out lo-fi music just really helps more with commentary. Well, with my commentary, that's that's just the music I like to listen to when I just chill out. All right, we're setting up the text to where it's gonna actually like recognize the UI HUD too, as well while we're already in this. To where it will just be also changing like the level of like which monster is it'll basically be changing like the text of which monster is actually on the screen at that time Also, I realized that resizing the art 
is very annoying and tedious. Because it causes, like... If anybody knows how to fix this, it causes, like... Quality to lower. Like, you'll see it in here towards, like, the end. It causes the quality to go down, like... Very noticeably. Like, I even, like, shift shift and changed it, it still didn't work. Okay. So, yeah. I think I did add, like, level. Oh, I think I know I did. I tried to spell level, and for some reason my brain put a 1 instead of an L. Maybe. And this needs to be a space, too. Okay, we shall see. I've been trying to find the perfect moment to do this so the child won't be woke. But the child is woke, so I can't do anything about that. You guys get to deal with screaming in the background. Okay, so this is the part where I actually figure out that none of this text is working inside of this because it's not legacy. It's not a leg legacy text, so it's not going in here or working at all. So this is where I started, you know overhauling everything, changing it, and also when I discover there's a legacy text to this. I thought I coded something wrong. I did not code anything wrong. It's just... just the wrong text that shows up. Because also... well, I guess... hold up. I think I might right-click and show it. Because I realized that a lot of other videos yeah, a lot of other videos, when they open the UI, their normal text is up here. Because they have an older version of Unity. Legacy is down here, is what I needed for this text stuff to actually work. So now that I find the Legacy, I start using that and replacing everything. Now I gotta resize everything and put it back to normal. So this is where I re-implement the player HUD. And do this <laughs> without flipping it around and screwing up everything. Had still to make sure it was the same and wasn't, you know, broken or anything as I uh, re implemented everything. Now I'm slowly de deleting the text that I have, the little blue T box. Slowly matching them up with each other. And delete. Then I was going to look a lot, lot more cleaner and clear as I'm doing all this now. But I'm doing this like one at a time, so I just cleared those so I can actually put those inside of the whole uh, player UI first. Go to player HUD. So now we're building it to where the player HUD will actually 
started recognizing each monster girl's like level and their text name. And we're changing it to where this is the player HUD and the game recognizes that it's you, the player, and what you're carrying and what their level will be once you join the battle. It's actually very easy to implement the enemy HUD just by copying a few things that are that are inside of the you know player HUD. Okay, I was just checking down, trying to fix any errors that I had. So now, as this this goes on, I have to make the battle system now. They'll actually control all of the battling. And this is pretty much where the player HUD, well, the en enemy and player HUD will go on. This is the area where we'll be making the enemy HUD. And the place that I goofed the most towards the end. Just because I didn't change this, uh, a code line here. So as you can see, it pops up as 17 because I'm overthinking it. It needs to be as empty, completely empty. So it's popping up as 17. It's recognizing that I have the, the monster girl at level seven. But what I'm not processing is that I have a one here. Which I'll figure it out, which I figure out towards the, towards like further in. Right now, this isn't my main concern. I just start going to the next thing. I think. I think I'm checking my coding and making sure I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, this right here is why I say Tigora might need a rework not sure maybe it's the way she's facing maybe if i turn her the other way it's fine actually i'm gonna turn her the other way later and see if that's fine because it could just be the way she's she's facing like this way huh yeah i'm gonna have to change everything anyway to where it faces the right side, so it could just be Tigora facing the wrong way. I think, do I change the, her rotation? Okay, so she does face that way. It, there's a weird thing about this. Eh, I, I don't know. Cause I, I like how she looks, but I think she might have to be either lowered or facing more this way so 
she might have to be redesigned. Not too sure yet. So, as you guys can saw, I just copied the play, the player unit and renamed it enemy unit. So now we're going to be at dragging the enemies unit over here. And here's the quality thing I was talking about. It looks a lot less quality now. Um, not sure how I'm going to fix this. I think it's something with the game's compression, maybe. But I'm personally not sure. Because all I did was slightly shift it down. You guys saw that. And the quality just kind of just like, no. But if I was to make it bigger, the quality would actually come back, though. It's just the issue of trying to find that little sweet spot without it being, like, too gigantic. Because this is, like, the perfect size, sadly. And I can't do anything about that. <laughs> so if anybody has any tips about this, or maybe I should just make the, the cam itself bigger if I can make the cam bigger and them bigger as well, I guess that would actually be a lot better. Yeah, I probably could make the cam a lot bigger, if anything. Who knows? But yeah, let me know. Here I'm trying to see if the if the quality just, you know, went down or anything like that. And yeah, it just looks like that. Okay, there we go. Trying to change it to full screen. And hold up, let's go back a little bit. Yeah, the quality still looks, looks like, it's just because of, I think the lining could be because even Tagora here actually kind of looks kind of offish too so I'm just playing with the image trying to trying to get it the best quality So if anybody have any tricks for that, let me know. It would definitely help out a lot. <laughs> Either that or I'll just have to get it um, remade. So I finished doing that. I just started going into coding the enemies. Enemy again. This is where I goof. I copy this. And I only changed this part. I didn't change the player unit to enemy unit. So it's still picking dialogue. It's still picking the text from the player unit so no matter if it's if it's checked as a player unit or not checked as a player unit 
it will still copy from here. So I learned that at the end of the video, <laughs> at the very end of the video. So now I'm just sitting here confused trying to figure out if I did anything wrong. Just trying to figure out why they're level 17. I think this is where I actually changed the text. At least I believe this is where I actually changed the text. I added a space just to see. Then I realized that one isn't supposed to be there. There we go. So now all the levels are showing up. I will probably have to use a different font because that seven kind of will throw off players. Even though I like the font, it's just the numbers. <laughs> so now, yeah, pretty much the rest of this video is trying to figure out what the heck went wrong with the level. I think I basically cut off the video from here or stopped myself from the video. And restart it again once I actually like am confident I know what's going on here. <laughs> I started re-adding text to the to the HUDs and everything just because I thought something was broken. And now I changed it. And now she pops up level five. <laughs> that was the only issue of that whole situation there. Was just that I just didn't change that simple coding. Like always, I always have like a big oopsie during like, you know, at least one to dev logs just because, you know, hey, I'm still new to this, to this stuff. And it's actually been a lot of fun figuring it out and trying new things. Um, once I get done with the basis of the game, there's going to be so many more things I'm going to have to try and do as well. And implement with each other, trying to fuse them together and stuff like that, like who knows i could probably have a quest system that i'm somehow gonna have to implement into the game and match it up with different you know systems of the game which is gonna be quite fucking weird to do but we shall see how that works out in the future with that said until then i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys in the next one peace out